What's up guys, it's Oblivious Gamer here, and well, today, we're gonna talk about Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. After so many years of anticipation and waiting, the game is finally out. Though it has been out in early access for people who pre-order it, um, I'm one of those people that have been playing the game, going through a lot of it, and putting a lot of time. And of course, this is a game I have been expecting for quite some time. Here are my thoughts, review, impression, however you want to call it. I just want to put it all out there. Grimble Fantasy Relink is an action RPG made by Side Games in-house. Originally, it was supposed to be developed by Platinum Games, but at some point during the development, that change. This game is coming out for the PS4, PS5, and PC. As I mentioned before, I have been putting quite the amount of time in the game, and so far, I have positive thoughts. I'm liking the game, I'm enjoying it. Though I do have some, I don't know if I would say complaints, but I can see why there is going to be a decent amount of people who might not be able to get into the game or might not like it. I would say the game is divided in the story mode and then the multiplayer quest aspects of the game. Story mode is fairly self-explanatory, you know, story, you follow it. Now, for the quest, as you progress you will be unlocking newer quest harder quest that you are going to be able to take with your party of you know cpu or you can go online and form a party with three other players so that's kind of like the two modes i would say of the game you are able to play you can finish go through story mode finish story mode or you can do quests overall I am personally having a lot of fun i am enjoying the game for what it is i love doing the quests and I did enjoy for what it was the story mode. Let's start with the story. The story is not really something grandiose, if I'm being honest. It's actually pretty straightforward. Granted, these characters have been established. So if you don't know much about Grand Blue Fantasy, you will be going a bit blind. However, the game does, or at least tries its best to explain enough so if you're new, you kind of understand. At the same time, there's something called Fates, which are episodes that tells you the backstory of the characters. And there are kind of like reasons for you to do the Fates, not just because you get to know a background of the characters, we get to know them, but also because there is that bonuses you can gain from watching the fates. Though from time to time the fates could have a mission that you're gonna do, but most of the time it's just you reading or watching and just learning. In this game, you play as either Gran or Jira. You get to choose the protagonists who are part of this party of skyfarers. You know, there are people who take on the skies and go on adventures because um in this game uh, you are able to fly with your ships and that's why they're called skyfarers i'm gonna try to simplify everything as much as i can uh, like i said i feel it's very simplistic you have a companion named lyra she is a big part and important aspect of grant she's also connected to grant uh, because when Gran helped her out um, she kind of had to share her life force with him and a big thing why they're kind of together and it's important they're important for each other however lyra has an ability that she's able to command primal beast Which primal beasts are these godlike beasts that before were used as weapons, they're very powerful. So Lyria having this ability already is really interesting. And one of the ones that you're able to see is she usually commands Bahamut. Lyria is kidnapped by a group known as the Church of Avia, led by this woman named Lil. Now, we don't know what they're up to, but it seems that they have an objective and plans with the primal beast. And obviously, they are up to no good. It would be up to you and your party to rescue Lyria and put a stop to the Church of Avia. That's pretty much it, to be honest. Most of the story is just you uh, going after Lyria and then fighting the primal beast and then going after Lyria and then trying to stop the church. Like, that's literally the plot. As I said, the story is okay. Like, I don't think there's anything to praise it. It's not like, oh my god, the story is amazing. You guys, like, it follows a specific path and it's okay. Like, it's okay. 
Uh, I feel though you might get more enjoyment from it if you are familiar with the characters. Like if you know these characters, you already have an idea of who they are, you already share some experiences by playing Grand Blue Fantasy, I think it's going to be a much more enjoyable experience than if you're just coming in blind with like, I have no idea what Grand Blue Fantasy is. Now, the other part of the game, as I mentioned, is the quest. Side games did state before that the story will be short while the end game content is where you will be spending most of your time like there's a lot of things to do by the end game and as I mentioned a big part is you taking these quests. Quests are divided into hordes where you're like gonna have five waves, you have conquests where like you're kind of going to specific areas and fighting each area of the monsters, you have boss fights, you have survival, which is obviously survive until the time runs out. And then there's defend, which is like, I have to defend an, an object or defend a person or, you know, pretty self-explanatory. But these are kind of the quests that you're going to be encountering. Quests are important as that's where you will be getting the materials, which can be used to get newer weapons, level up your weapons, get sigils uh, and get materials to strengthen sigils. Obviously, you are able to get these in the story mode. But quest mode is where you're probably going to be able to get most of your materials to, you know, strengthen your character. And that's why, like, you really want to be able to do it. As you progress the story and get to the end, you, of course, will unlock more and harder quests to do. Of course, quests come with a variety and they also come with, like, sub-objectives to do. So there's the main objective and then there's kind of, like, sub-objectives that you can do. And if you complete all of them, you, are a you most likely will be able to get a high rank. The higher the rank, the more materials and more rewards you're gonna get. In terms of gameplay, this game is an action RPG. You have a normal attack, a unique attack, and each character has four skills. Each character plays different with their own set of attacks and skills. Plus, they also have an element they focus on, so each character has an element. And, of course, enemies do have a weakness to a particular element. Now, the characters all have different combos and, of course, different range, depending on their weapon and what they do. In your party, you can have up to four characters with you. Now, the game has some abilities like Link Attack, which is when your party is able to attack an enemy at the same time. After uh, building up a meter, you all can attack together. If you all manage to synchronize your attack, you get like a slow-mo timer, and that's really useful. Because like skills cooldown decreases, so you get your to use your skills much quicker if you're in that cooldown moment. There's also Skybound Arts, which are kind of like your supers. And there's a bar that you're building, and then once you reach 100%, you can do your Skybound Art. Now, you can combine your Skybound Art with your other party members. So you do yours, and then the next party, and then the next party member, and then the next party member. And if, you're, if you all manage to combine, you're able to do a full burst. And that leads into like what's called Chain Burst. So Chain Burst basically is the more you combine your Skybound Arts, the stronger the burst is going to get. And then obviously that extra damage that you will be able to do and it is very powerful. There's also dodging and blocking in this game. So of course you have perfect dodges and perfect blockings, which they all grant their boost if you do them. Now, this game is not open world. However, some areas in the story mode you will be able to explore and are decent size. And why would I say you'll be able to explore? Uh, because they're kind of like chests scattered around monsters that you can fight and even kind of like these tombs, which contain powerful enemies that you can encounter to fight and of course you you know defeating these powerful enemies will grant you materials and bonuses so there is a reason to explore around but like i said this is not like a massive open world that you're gonna go around the fights are entertaining as you will encounter different enemies because there's different environments and as i said before depending on the environment there's gonna be different enemies the boss fights are very unique and they're very fun to tackle because, as I said, bosses have kind of like their own movesets, their own abilities, and it adds a bit to the enjoyment because it can get really nasty with what they're, some of the moves they're able to do when you're trying to run around, dodge, block. And as I said before, these boss fights, especially the primeval boss fights, are um, even more crazier and they're each unique with what they're doing. This at least keeps it entertaining for you to be like, oh, I'm going to go fight the next boss. And it's not as repetitive because, like I said, there is uniqueness. Your characters will be leveling up. However, that isn't the only way to make them stronger. So first, characters have their own unique skill trees, which are divided in offense, defense, and eventually like there's one called collection 
which is like stat boost for the weapons that you unlock. So the way you level up your skill tree is by getting mastery points and using them. You get mastering points by doing quests, leveling up, defeating enemies, finding chests. You're constantly going to be showered in mastery points and you get a ton of them. However, you will also be using a lot of them because as you progress in the skill tree, like it tends to consume more and more points. And the other thing is you also don't have your character, but you also have your party that you want to do your skill trees because of course you want you want to have your party be as strong as you when you're doing your quest and the story mode so you're kind of having to divide your points with three other party members which is why for me like there was only one character that i wanted to unlock which was seda and then you can unlock you get like a ticket that you're able to use to unlock these characters you get tickets throughout the story mode and obviously through doing quests to unlock some of the characters and i just unlock seda and that's the character that I've been focusing with um, my three other party members. Because I feel like if I unlock other characters, I, I don't have enough mastery points. And I'm kind of like, waste. I feel I'm wasting my mastery points. At least until I'm done with the story mode. If I put it to other characters, I'm not going to be using a lot. So it's just like, okay, I like Seda. Seda is my favorite character. I'm just going to use Seda. And then like these three characters. And then I'm just going to level up until once I finish it. And then when I'm done, I'll unlock other characters. And just then refocus on these other characters. But like I said, you have variety in what you can do each to, each to its own. But as I said before, you are going to be able to get a ton of these points, but you're also going to be wasting a lot of them. Then you also have weapons, which you can level them up to make them stronger. There's also like a level cap, so you're going to have to find materials to uncap your weapon and then I can level it up again. And they can provide quite the amount of boost and strength. Then you also have sigils, which sigils are you can add to your characters and the sigils have like unique traits or stats to help boost your character some of these traits can be very useful depending on the situation or depending on like if you're going for a quest that is a boss fight if you're going for a horde mode some of them have very wacky stuff that they can do so you're able to create a unique character depending on what you're going to do so it's not that even that you're just focusing one on character but you can depending on the sigils you can focus on oh i want this character to be super strong in the offense or i want this character to be strong at long range attacks or i want this this character and those sigils help you do that even more and that's basically the gist of the game like pretty much it personally i'm having a lot of fun with the game but i think some people will not so depending on who you are the combat could feel repetitive the combat is fun it's serviceable, but it's nothing crazy to go about. Characters are very unique and they also have their skills and you have skills that you're going to be able to unlock. But again, depending on who you are, how much you're going to commit to that. It's very hard to say commit and waste all your mastery points to unlock the skills that are further down the skill tree for you to enjoy a character. So you have that aspect. Personally, I would have enjoyed more if the combat was a bit more crazier and also if you're able to switch party members on the fly like i personally would have enjoyed that more switching party members on the fly to create more unique stuff that's just me um i'm just saying the story mode is also not long but again depends on who you are if you want to partake in it because it can become boring depending on who you are because the story is not anything crazy or unique and of course to get to the end game you should finish the story mode the story mode is short so you have that but some people are hooked by a good story and it's an okay story it's not anything to shout about and uh the fact that some people don't know these characters doesn't help it helps a lot having previous experiences and know who these characters are to enjoy the game more and then you have the end game content which again i feel can be very hard depending on who you are because to strengthen your weapons and to get stronger or to unlock weapons or to level up certain things you have to get materials and you can get your materials throughout the story mode but most of the time it's better to do the quests so you are going to be doing the quests sometimes even multiple times the quest to get the amount of materials you need to level up is it your weapon is it your your sigil to get stronger or to be able to forge a weapon for me for example to level up a sigil i need like griffin feathers so during the story i will encounter griffins to be able to get griffin feather however i saw that there was a quest where i'm finding a griffin so i just did the quest multiple times until i had enough griffin feathers and i'm like okay now i can just level up my sigils especially the sigils that i'm using but it becomes a, could you say kind of like monster hunterish where you're like redoing quests to fight bosses or to fight enemies to be able to get certain materials to then 
use those materials to level up your weapon only for you to go back and do again the quest to get more materials or better materials kind of like a circles not to say there's not enjoyment like I am enjoying that, but I feel it's not going to be for everyone. And the other thing is this game is just squished in in a bad, bad uh, moment. So the game is coming out when there's games like Yakuza or like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. Uh, Persona 3 Reload is coming out soon. You have Tekken 8 that came out. Yeah, you have a lot of games that are coming out. So if this game is not a banger or if this game is not amazing it's kind of overshadowed because there's other games to play of course people who are fans of grand blue fantasy i'm sure they're gonna get the game but i don't know i like i've been waiting through this game for so long so i'm happy the game is here i like it i'm having a lot of fun but it just sucks that it's gonna be a bit overshadowed because it's just stuck in between this day that there's also a lot of releases during the week i personally would have wanted this game to come out when there's nothing so people can see the game and everybody can focus on this game but right now everybody's focused on so many different games so yeah i mean like i said i like it um it meets my expectations i am having a lot of fun but sadly i don't think this is going to be a game for everyone personally i think if you have the opportunity try the demo uh the demo is going to give you a good idea of what the game is and if you're going to like it or not and the demo does have a good variety of characters that you can use and also it does have the quests that you're able to partake to see like okay we enjoy doing this a lot i feel they're kind of trying to use this game as a platform that's just me theorizing right now where if it sells well they can just add quests and content and characters and sell that and just keep the game going and turn it into like a life servicey game in a way because you could just add stuff that's just my theory because they kind of did that with grand blue fantasy versus where they just keep adding characters, they added a battle pass for the fighting game, and like you pay the battle pass, so of course um, that's money that they get. So I again feel that they're testing some waters with this. Um, personally, I hope it does well. I would like to see more games like this, and again this is also their first big game. So I think they did alright, but sadly this is a game that I don't recommend it for everyone. I think if you're a Grand Blue Fantasy fan, um, this is definitely a game to get, you're gonna enjoy it most likely. Um, if you like action RPGs with like the fact that you're gonna be doing quests over and over to get materials to strengthen your weapons and stuff, if that's something you're into, get it. However, if you're somebody who like you want a good story or like you want something that immerses you, I think just try the demo. The best thing I can say for people that are undecided or not interested, if you have a hint of interest, try the demo. If you don't like the demo, don't get the game. However, if you do like the demo, please get the game. I think you're gonna enjoy it. As always though, such is about me. What are your thoughts, guys? This was a long one. <laughs> Hope you'll have a wonderful day or night wherever you are. This is Oblivious Gamer, 